Hey guys, I'm Ken. And I'm Jeff. This is Comic Rewind, where we take a random book from our personal comic collection and just talk about it. That's right, guys. And today I picked The Punisher War Zone, number one. Um, this came out in 1992, and it was kind of a big deal when it came out. I mean, uh, I, I don't know. You, you'll see why I've, here as I've we go. Heard, it's got this super cool cover. I've heard people mention it. Uh, I've never actually read it. But I've heard that it was good. Well, yeah, I mean, you got a movie titled after it. Yes. None of the stuff in that, though, is in this. Um, th things from that movie do happen in this series later. Um, I think at the beginning of the movie, there's like a scene where he drops down on the table and starts shooting everybody. Yeah. That's in one of these, but not this one. Okay. Okay, okay. but um, we'll, we'll get into all that. Um, it kind of starts off just yeah, I'm, with... I'm, I'm uh, digging the cover. Yeah, the, the cover, cover is super cool. It's a neat idea. They have, like, the skull on the inside, and, you know, as you open it, you, you can see it printed through the front. Yeah. But, um, as we go into it, it starts off automatically with the Punisher meeting up with one of his informants, and, um, his name's Dilbert. And Dilbert has already killed one police officer, who we see laying here in a pool of blood, and he has no one being held hostage. Now, from what I understood reading the beginning of this, like, Punisher was going up here to talk to him. Now, I don't know if Dilbert already knew that or not. Um, it, that's questionable. Okay, but as we move on past it, um, you see that he's pretty much holding the cop hostage and telling the Punisher, you know, I'll shoot her back off. And the Punisher, through the course of this whole book, Frank is, um, everything's, for the most part, an internal narrative done by him. And it's actually really good because it's kind of grizzled and he's kind of mean. You know, okay. um, you get to see a little bit of inside. Of oh yeah, yeah. Like right here, he he starts kind of thinking to himself, you know, like my first shot on this guy should be a kill shot, but he ain't gonna let it be. So you know, he's holding the the police officer in front of him. So what's he do? He shoots through her arm into the guy's gut oh. and um, yeah. drops him. And he even I, I love this this one sentence. It's um, fate walks a razor's edge. Just another day in Bushwick. And I, I thought it was kind of cool. I mean, it, the whole thing is him being just kind of an internal asshole. Yeah. I mean, he's just I talking to himself in his head, but he is very, like, psh. Um, okay, so, anyway, he just, he, you know, he's got he's got the guy down that he shot in the gut, and what's he do? He just opens fire and just murders him. Um, you know, I mean, And I mean, he, like, drops a clip from an M16 in him, you know? I mean, he's that. And you get a really cool double-page yeah, splash yeah. letting you know that Punisher's pretty much going to kill everybody in this book. Um, which, by the way, this was written by Chuck D Dixon, and John Romano Jr. did the, the artwork in it. Okay. So it's actually pretty cool. It's very 90s-tacular. Yeah. I mean, yeah. 92 book, so... Still it's, in the, when the, when the red you know, it, it's stuff. got its moments. Like, he's so wide in this. Yeah, but broad shoulders. Yeah, yeah. But but in any case, after he, uh, after he just murders this other guy... Um, the police officer chick, of course, pulls her gun on him, and he's like, look, you need to get medical attention for the other cop. Like, you do whatever you gotta do. And he just turns around and walks out. And then you see, like, reporters rushing in in the aftermath, talking to her, and they're like, oh, man, was it the, the so-called Punisher? And she just won't answer anything. And so leaves, he's kind of, you know? so like, he's, he, he's kind of mythical, I guess. Kind of like yeah, a, no. Yeah, no. Like, they all know he's there. But is he there? We don't know. Yeah, it's it's, it's one like, of those things. Was it one of those like, was it him this time, or just someone else, like just some guy shooting at you, or was it the Punisher? <sighs> that, well, that's the thing. Yeah, yeah, that's how they more come off. Was it this Punisher? But it does come off a little mythological in a way too. You know, kind kind of like in um in our last episode we talked about an Asriel oh, comic yeah, book, yeah. and there was a moment much like that in it. But um after this, he just kind of goes home. And at this point, you know, Punisher's always got a guy working with him. Um, his name's Microchip. And Punisher's got, like, his little air, and Microchip's there, like, working on stuff and finding out new cases and things to follow Is up on. Is he a tech guy? Yeah, yeah, he's a tech guy, of course. So, yeah, yeah. Um, the name just kind of now, uh, throws it out there. Keep in mind through the course of this how they are bonded together is Microchip's son was murdered by mobsters and stuff, and the police wouldn't do anything, so he has the story close to Frank's, 
his, his okay. son was all he had. He had no wife. Yeah. So and then Frank lost his family the same way. So that's how these two are tied together. Monsters. But um, you get Frank coming home and him just kind of being a jerk to Microchip right off. I mean, and um, Microchip kind of just gets frustrated and is like, because because he tells him he thinks he went a little bit overboard. He was like, man, you just like wipe that dude out in front of that cop. You know, everybody was on their way, and he's like, look. You, I know what I'm doing. You, you can play I got this. Murder. You know, and um, he ends up getting mad and leaves. So as soon as he's leaving, Frank's automatically like, well, Microchip's been taking a couple nights off a week here. What's uh, going on? Where is he going? Uh, uh, and, like, as Microchip's leaving, he's like, where are you going? What are you doing? Who are you talking to? Like, like he's a meeting. He's like, dude, you're not my mom. Okay, I'm done with this shit. <laughs> and he gets mad and leaves, right? So, of course, Frank follows him. Um... Well, Frank's following them. There's even a there's a point where Microchip like he, he's doing all kinds of like slick stuff. Like he jumps on a subway at the last second. So kind of he uh, he kind of knows Frank. Frank might be tailoring. You think that? Um, there's a point where he goes in a restaurant and like he comes out disguised, and Frank's like, "Oh man, deep cover! Like something major is happening." Well, as Frank's watching him, he sees him after he gets the disguise goes through a couple buildings and then goes into another one and he goes up to this room and he's just sitting there talking to this guy and Frank's just watching him talk and he's like you know Frank automatically like Psh, what you guys talking about I bet it's me so he goes home and um, of course as micro comes in the door Frank's sitting there waiting for him like you know his father and he's cleaning a gun like <laughs> And um, what he's like, up to do? so what you been doing? And he was like, nothing, Frank. I just had to get out of here. And he's like, I saw you. I followed you. Who was the guy? Who was the guy you were talking Man, to? He, and the guy's like, for sounds like a he, crazy, like a crazy stalker. He, boy he's like a girlfriend. Yeah. Um. Like, all right. Microchip immediately is like, why didn't you just ask me? Like, you didn't have to follow me. That's super deep. So you realize, like, like creepy stuff. he was just being, like, going undercover and stuff like that because he was leaving, coming to and from this place where oh, they hide yeah, out. That's the only reason. He didn't know yeah. anybody was following him. Yeah, he didn't know, think they were. The, the Batmobile, he's got to go under and down. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. Shit and so and he did all that because, you know, they're, they're trying to hide. Can't just have but a big billboard that says, hey. In any case, Frank's like, you know... Well, like, as soon as he says, all you had to do was ask me, you know, you could have talked to me or something, and you yeah. didn't have to follow me. Frank's immediately like, yeah, that's great. Who were you talking to? And he was like, a therapist. A therapist, you dick, because I lost my son, and I can't just be cold and not talk about it and die inside like you. And yeah. you don't want to hear me talk about it. And he just kind of goes off on him, you know, and... Need a costume to go to a therapist? Frank, the whole time this guy's like spilling it out, Frank's like, Yeah, did you tell him about me? He's like, That's all you care about. Like, all you care about yourself. He's like, All this crap I do for you and all this help I try and give you, I get no trust from you, even after all this time. And like, you're, you're just, all you do is shit on me, pretty much, you know? And of course, once again, he gets mad, grabs his crap, and storms out. And Frank is like, yeah, I heard him. I heard him bad. He needed to be hurt. He was weak. He was getting too comfortable. And he even says, like, he just needs more scar tissue. Like, he'll get over it. And Frank keeps telling himself, he needs us just as much as I do. He'll be back. And he kind of has that mentality of, no matter how bad I treat him, he will come back and help me, regardless of what I do to him. You know, so, whatever. And then... We just jump to Columbia, okay, and you have some drug lords talking, and um, one is talking about how one man came and wiped out their, it, the, pretty much their whole army, they're saying, but their army consisted of about 60 people, you know, but anyway, one guy moved in and just wiped them all out, blew the whole place up, and blew up their drugs, and this guy's missing an eye, and he's like, I'm the only one that survived, you know. And the other drug lord's like, I, I can't believe one man could do all this. And then all of a sudden you see his people getting blown through the window. We flip the, the page after we get a nice cool ad for a Game Boy Star Trek video game. Yeah. Um, 
We had some random guy named Shotgun that just killed everybody. Um, I'm going to be real. I have no idea who Shotgun is. He's just a an African-American version of the Punisher with a really big collar. I Pretty mean, that's much. about it. Um, yeah. I tried to look up Shotgun, actually, and I couldn't find anything. So, I, I don't know. He's probably a guy that was just okay. in a couple of issues. Yeah, probably one time. But um, then we cut back to Frank, and he's waking up in the morning. And he's doing the whole thing of waking up. Oh, he's not here. Well, I can't believe he's not here. Guess the well, time doesn't matter. Back. He'll be back. He needs this. And, and you know, and that's that's all he's really thinking. And um, then we see a uh, what this is is it's a restaurant in Chinatown, but it's actually a place where the mob does a money uh, money laundry operation. Okay. okay? Um, some guys are breaking in there and pretty much robbing the mob right now. And this is like right in the middle of the street. They're, they're just blowing the crap out of people and stuff and stealing, you know, garbage bag full of money. The Punisher is out on a, like, mad rampage right now because he's having girlfriend syndrome and he's just got broken yeah, up with. I'm sure he's so looking for He's somebody. looking for trouble, okay? He, he sees this. Drops right down on the hood of the car, and you get a nice double page splash of him murdering all of them without question. Not only does he murder them, he jumps off the car and fires a grenade into it and blows the car up in the middle of the street. Like a, it looks like a big ass, uh, assault rifle with a oh, grenade oh, yeah, launcher yeah, and yeah, yeah. Uzi and yes, yeah, yeah, he's got like an M14. And, yeah, I mean he's just laying him. it down. Um, he. Hurts several innocent people through the course of this. Yeah, you know, strange um, shit. And, and he grabs one guy. There's one guy he did not shoot. And he purposely did really? not shoot him. Really? And he drags this guy off. Now You shoot 10, 15 innocent bystanders, but manage to not hit one of the guys you're aiming at. Well, the, the people that he that got hurt were from the explosion when he blew the car out. Uh -huh. The innocent bystander. He didn't actually shoot him. He's too good of a shot for that. Even though he's just empty and flips. But, um, heavy machine gun. Uh, okay, he, there's this guy, and it's this one guy in particular, and he, he drags him off and just kind of like blasts him in the face, and the guy passes out. The guy wakes up, and he's in the, I guess you would say, the Punisher's lair. And um, the Punisher already knows his name. His name is Mickey Fonduzzi. And he tells him, uh, The name sounds familiar. You got information. And I need to talk to you about it. And the guy's like, I ain't telling you nothing, you know. And the Punisher pretty much lets him know that he already knows who he is, who he works for, who he's connected to, all this. He's like, you're going to make a meeting for me. And the guy's like, there's no way they'll kill me. Well, then we get the scene from the, uh, when they made that Punisher movie with Thomas Jane. And you had the moment of him, um taking the guy and stringing him up and putting the popsicle against his back. Oh, yeah. yeah. yeah the, the torture yeah, scene. The, that all happens right scene. here, which oh. is really offsetting for me because he tricks this guy into thinking he's burning his back even though he just murdered all these other people. And what? all it is is so, burning the guy and he still is wanting him to do something for him. You know, it's like you're so still going to murder. Uh, I'm going to trick you into thinking I'm burning your back. To get information. So that you will. As no, it's not even to get information. It's so that he will set up a meeting, okay, with his bosses. He wants them to set up a meeting. Not for the Punisher, but you're going to get me in the room with him, okay? So he tricks him with the popsicle, pulls the popsicle off his back, and puts it in his mouth, and is like, okay, now see how this could have went. Which is. A little offsetting for the book because you would really think he would just cut a hunk out of him. Yeah. I mean, at this point, it, yeah. it's gone so violent. This you're seems okay a little bit murder. unviable because you're okay with murder. The one guy Roger. that you're threatening to do something for you that's super important, you actually don't. Fl you trick him and let him know you tricked him before you send him to do it. You're but, right. You're willing to kill everyone around him. Yeah, yeah. But you're you're yeah. Kind of torturing. Him. But in any case, the the guy breaks, and of course he sets up a meeting for him. Oh. And he sets up a meeting and says uh, that they're looking for new guys because all their guys just got wiped out by some asshole wearing a, a skull. And so um, they they talk to him, and he's like, you know what? I That's know a guy that'll work for this. It's my cousin. His name is Johnny Tower. And then of course you see Frank Castle come in. 
He's got his hair like that. He looks like Steven Seagal or something. Like he, he kind of. He kind of does. I yeah. Can see it. Yeah. It, it's. It's every stereotype for an Italian you could think yeah. of. Is what he walks in looking Slayers like. That yeah. that, that's kind of like Grizzly your last page reveal. Is like, oh, here's Fox my Fox cousin Fox. Johnny Tower, and here he is. And oh, Johnny Tower. And then the book ends. You know, um, it, it's not too bad. Super violent. I tell yeah. you what, the narrative through it is actually really good. Like you, you can't help but put this grizzled voice with it as yeah. you go, and it makes the book really likable, even though not much happens in this. Not much at all, you know, just a couple simple things. I'm, I'm, but, digging, um, the, I'm digging the big, big splash. Yeah, yeah, it. it's super cool cover, you know, did a good job for it. You know, it really made you think this book was going to be worth something down the road, like they did with a lot of things in the 90s. Mm. I know we all ran around buying holographic covers that didn't matter, you know. But I got a few. In, in all, it's still a really cool book, and Ramada's art is, is, although it's a little bit of a dated version of what he's done, I it's really like Ramada Jr. Really and solid, I think yeah, it's it's got really cool it moments. A lot of the, uh, you see the, a lot of expression. Yeah, the action moments are um, are really good. You know, um, one thing that's kind of odd though is Microchip is very gross looking. I mean, they make him balding, they make his skin bad, they make him over like he looks, they do everything they can to keep him human. He looks like a stereotypical forty-year-old virgin in his mom's. Yeah, the, the guy with carpal tunnel that's clicking the playing World of Warcraft, the you know that picture in your head, it, it's like that. Like they do everything they can to make him like, so and, and yet funny. he's the only like, you know, personable character in the book. So, but yeah, in, in any so, case, so cool I'll, book. I'll cool assume run. at some point they're gonna dip back into uh, shotgun. And oh, See, um, I don't have the other books, but as the Warzone series goes on, the shotgun character plays a role in it, but shotgun it kind of doesn't matter. You know, it, down none of it matters it. anymore. I don't know what happened to him. I know he's there for this, but as I said, I tried to look up if he had more of a history than this, if, if he's like a current standing Marvel character, and I really couldn't find anything. And so. I've made it out of this run. May not. May not have. Um, I don't well, know. But the way Frank's killing people... I don't think he did. Yeah. So, anyway, guys, that's Punisher Warzone number one. Really cool book, really cool story arc. If you get the chance, check it out. Yeah. It's not a bad, not a bad issue. Um, so, if you guys have any questions or want to see something we want to see us talk about something specific, let us know in the comments below. Yeah. Thanks for watching, guys. Don't forget, please like and subscribe.